Hi, good evening, everyone. Thank you for being here. We'll do the um, Pledge of Allegiance first. I pledge allegiance to the flag, to the flag of America, America. And to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Do you want to do the roll call first? Your mute button is off. I think he's telling you you're muted. You can't hear me? Nobody. I hear you. Yeah, I, I hear you. Too. Yeah. Me too. Yeah. Okay, no good. Okay, Chairwoman Julie Highsmith. Present. He's saying that he can't hear us. Vice Chair Lisa Ryan. Oh, can you hear me? I don't know. Okay, I don't know. Mine's off. Um, yeah, I don't know. Okay, let's see. It looks like you have a wrong unit. I don't know who that is. Because <laughs> mine's off. Well, could you go ahead and do yours? Yes. I mute all attendees, yes. But he said you should be able to unmute yourself. Yeah, but I don't know. But I'm doing a mute and it's not doing, it's not working. Well, can you try to unmute yourself and see? Okay, are you on mute now? I'm not doing anything. I don't know. Uh, yeah, because I'm not clicking anything. It's just right over here. So they said, me yeah, what happens if you click that red where it says all? This See one? The red, no, the red that has a red line through it. This? Yeah, all the way down at the bottom where it says all. Oh. Right here? Mm hmm I did that. It said mute all other. Okay, now click it again. And this one said unmute. When I do unmute. Yes, unmute all attendees. Yes. And I put yes. Yes. I've been doing that. Does it still show, Bill, that you can't? Can you click next to my name where the red microphone is? Okay, I'll turn Bill know. since he's sitting there. What does it show now? 
Self muted, try now. Self muted. Oh, still there. No, try to do it again, Bill. I'm good. That worked. That worked. Yep, that worked. Okay. Thank you, Jacqueline. Okay. Thank you both. Okay, so I need to do each, everyone then. Yeah. Okay, let me do a roll call. Chair Julia Smith. Can't hear? Hold on. Why well, can't you hear me? Can you hear me? I can I hear you. Okay, present. Present, it's working. Okay. <laughs> okay, Vice Chair Lisa Ryan. Present. Crystal Clark. I'm sorry, Dr. Bill Tolomer. Present. Brittany Lee. Present. Denise Lawrence. Dorian Johnson. Present. There, yeah. Okay, Vice Mayor Jeff Amara. Yes. It shows red on the corner. Denise is talking to Jacqueline. Denise is, is on. Okay, I'm pushing Should Jeff. I mute? I can't unmute Jeff. Jeff, could you push yours now? Okay, okay unmute it. We got it. Okay. And I did see Denise pop up as a voice there. Yes, I saw Denise. Okay. So should I unmute everyone? I think we're good right now, right? Yeah, we are. Unmute everybody but Dr. Armas. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to shorten okay. the meeting. <laughs> I think what you did that we're all able to unmute and mute ourselves now. Okay. All right. Okay, we have a new board member, Denise. Do you want to introduce yourself? Um, can you hear? I, hi. Yes, we can um, hear I'm you. I'm Denise Lawrence. I am excited to be part of your uh, board. I, I'm not really what to say about myself. I live in Royal Palm. I've been here for a number of years. I am currently a middle school teacher at Rosarian Academy in West Palm Beach. Um, so nice to meet everyone. Great. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Welcome. Okay, and Principal Manriquez is going to present first tonight from Western Academy. Thank you for being here. She can't hear. Can't hear her. Does it show that you're muted? She's on now. Yeah, she can hear us. We can't hear her. Mm -hmm. She has to unmute herself. She said she did. Is she unmuted on your end? Yeah. Yeah, she's unmuted on our screen too. So this is a principal test to see if you can present without us hearing you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure that she's unmuted. <laughs> Nothing. Principal Manriquez, can you? It's showing on their end that you have them muted. 
But I'm not, our microphone is on. Can you go out, come back in, Ms. Manriquez? Yeah, why don't you try that real quick? Someone's on the phone with IT right now as well. Okay, so she's back. All the thing is. Can you see her? She's fine. I don't see her. Yeah, she's on there, but I don't see her on the screen. Here she oh, is. There she is. Okay, mm -hmm. let me present her. Can we hear anybody outside the room? Nope. Nope. Can't hear. Darian, can we hear you? Can you say something? You guys hear me? Yes, we can hear Darian. Darian. Right. Right. But what she did, she, un she gave me the option to like unmute. So when I clicked yes, I was unmuted and then I muted myself again. And I guess she has to give everyone that option. Just like you did for each of us. What did it say? Click mute. Do you want to? Switch the order until we can get okay, the principal so Manriquez. Yeah, start with uh, no, principal Mikowski. Wait a minute, she can try again. She, she we can't, can't hear, hear her either. either. Nope. I'll give her the option. Can it self mute? And it's muted by organizer. Okay. What the heck? I don't Did know. you try making principal Manriquez a presenter? Yes, she's a presenter. And it still won't let you unmute yourself. Well, I think she has to unmute herself. Click here to read the chat message. I don't know what's going on. That's a message that they're getting. Saying you unmuted yourself, but you've been muted by the organizer. That's what we had, yeah. yeah it's the same one we had, yeah. But I'm not doing <laughs> Then we would all have to rejoin. Yeah, I can't restart. Yeah, I don't even see. Well, Bill, did you put yourself on mute? Because I didn't touch yours. I'm good. I'm the second to last guy behind Dr. Armour. She wants to unmute. I know this. Okay, let me try. You, you need to mute Dr. Armour and myself and give everybody else an opportunity to speak. Self mute. <laughs> organize it. I don't know. Is 
Because I, I mean, I'm giving them the option, but it's not coming on. It's like, I don't know. I don't know, it's on here. It's because if I'm clicking this, it's just not changing anything. It's interesting that we got Darren here. Yeah, because he said she did something. And then, yeah. Yeah, because it is self mute. What happens when you click the red button next to Jessica's name? Can't read that. Well, click that. Yeah. And then it was blue. Please. Now, can you hear her if she speaks? I can't hear anything. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Oh, great. <laughs> what is that? That's Jessica. Okay, so what okay. you just did, do that to everyone, and then they'll be able to unmute themselves. But I didn't Turn do everyone's screen. But okay. some of it won't let me do it. She's self muted. If it just says they're self muted, that's fine. Okay. Principal Mikowski, can you test okay. yours now? Can you hear me now? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. okay, wait a minute. Let's, so I need to self mute everyone then. Okay. Okay. Super chairwoman. Save the day. Okay, let me make Jessica a presenter. So now we can hear each other, but they can't, they're not recording us. They can't hear us in there, right? Or they're, we're fine. Everything's fine now? It's just being recorded. Yeah, it's being recorded. Yeah. Okay. He just can't hear us, but that's fine. There we go. Okay. Now, now we can get started. All right. <laughs> All ready? Okay. <laughs> can you still hear me? We can. Yes. yes. Well, thank you so much for having me here tonight. Um, my name is Jessica Manriquez, and I am the principal at Western Academy Charter School in Royal Palm Beach. Whoops, there it goes. Sorry about that. Um, so our mission here at Western Academy is to equip all children with the skills necessary for success on both an educational and social level through quality student-centered learning, which promotes high standards, diversity, creativity, and acceptance. We believe that both the family and community are essential in the education of children, and that together, they will become socially adept individuals with self-confidence, self-respect, compassion, and respect for others and their community. Um, here at Western Academy, we have a very high-level academic program, but our focus is not just academics. We are also teaching to the whole child, which is why we do have that strong focus on becoming responsible um, citizens of the school community, as well as the community around them. This year, our demographics, we have a very diverse school population, as you can see by the pie chart shown there. Um, currently, our enrollment is 512 students in kindergarten through eighth grade. We have about half of that in our elementary program and half in our middle school grades six through eight. Um, economically disadvantaged makes up 44% of our total student body. Uh, we do have students on our campus with disabilities um, that have IEP. 11% uh, of our total student population have a special plan. Um, most of our ESE, well, all of our ESE students are mainstreamed in the gen ed classroom, um, and then they have the help of support facilitation um, ESE teachers in their content areas. We also have a population of gifted students here at Western Academy uh, that accounts for about 7% of our student population. Most of those students are in our middle school program, as we do not have um, a gifted program in our elementary school but we feel that just the model of our instruction, which I'll explain in a few moments, really lends itself to pushing those high level learners. So we haven't needed um, a, a separate um, gifted program for our elementary students. In the middle school, however, students that come in um, or go up through the grades with a gifted plan 
are um, getting support from gifted endorsed teachers in their content areas. We also have a very small, um, but still um, on our campus, ESOL population. 3% of our uh, students are identified as active English learners of other languages. Uh, some of our achievements um, that we do have posted on our website, um, we have been an A-rated school since 2006. Um, we are very proud of that distinction and hope once again that we will be able to achieve that honor this year uh, with the spring FSA test. We are a five-star school, one of the few charter schools in Palm Beach County to receive that distinction. Um, and we have held that since 2010. We are also a national demonstration site for Project Child. Since 2011, what Project Child is, is an acronym that stands for Changing How Instruction for Learning is Delivered. That is the instructional delivery model that we use in our elementary grades, kindergarten through fifth grade. Uh, we are one of the few schools in Florida that does still use Project Child, and we are a national demonstration site where we have you know, teachers um, from other schools throughout the country um, in the past coming years coming to visit our school to kind of see how we implement that instructional model and best meet the needs of our students. We are also a high performing charter school. Um, that's a designation from the Department of Education. To be considered high performing as a charter school, you have to have received at least two school grades of an A um, and no grade below a B for the last three years um, consecutively. And as um, I've stated previously, we have been an A school since 2006. Um, also to be a high performing charter school, we have to have um, unqualified audits. So clean audits for the last three years. Every single year, uh, we do have um, an audit that comes back clear. We have a very strong business department here. Um, Ms. Auerbach, she makes sure that you know she has all of our accounting um, in place. We are also a Green School of Excellence. That is a designation um, given to us um, since 2016. Uh, we are very proud of that honor and try very hard each year to increase the um, Green School Initiative here at Western Academy. Um, I'll talk a little bit um, in a few moments about some things we're doing this year um, to help achieve that again. We are also a Florida School of Excellence. Um, since 2017, we've had that designation from the Department of Education. Um, it's basically because based on our end of the year state scores, we um, placed in the top 20% overall of all schools within the state of Florida. In our elementary program, kindergarten to fifth grade, we do use Project Child. Um, as it says here, that's a triangulated instructional model. We have teams of teachers that work together um, in three grade levels and three different content areas. So in K first and second, there is a reading teacher, a math teacher, and a writing teacher that teaches the reading math, social studies, and writing science to those three grade levels. So our teachers are, are certified in elementary education, K-6, but they really specialize in a specific content area. So they get to know those standards inside and out, um, can really differentiate within their instructional block for the students that are on grade level or maybe a little below grade level and need some support or even enrich the you know um, high level advanced learners because they have those standards and understand exactly what needs to be taught at the next level, um, they can really differentiate for their students' needs. With Project Child, our students are with those three teachers for three years, so they loop with the same teachers and the same students for those three consecutive years. Um, it truly builds a strong family um, and, com and classroom community as the teachers get to know the strengths and weaknesses of the students, uh, and their families very well. Um, the same thing happens in our intermediate program in grades three, four, and five. The students will enter third grade, be assigned to a team, and then loop with those teachers for three years and have three different subject areas, content teachers throughout the day. Each block of instruction is 90 minutes long for those three areas. And within those 90 minutes, they will have whole group lessons, um, small groups or individual um, groups where the students are working with the teacher on specific skills that they need. 
in our middle school program, we have two programs, um, the regular middle school um, content tracks with the language arts, math, science, social studies, and you know the regular middle school electives of PE, computers, art, and music. And we also have a STEAM Academy, which is a middle school choice program. Students in our STEAM Academy are on or above level in all their content areas. It is um, a choice program that the students have to apply to and meet certain criteria in order to be placed in that um, advanced level STEAM Academy. Uh, they have to maintain a GPA of 3.2 um, each marking period, and they cannot have any grades below a C in order to maintain um, eligibility for that STEAM Academy. In addition to advanced level courses for all the content areas, they choose a STEAM track either the IT track, which consists of, you know, learning about the different Microsoft suite products, learning the, the Google suite, um, learning how to do some coding and some gaming. Um, there's 3D printing as well. Or they choose to go into the engineering and robotics track where they're working with um, our Mr. Contreras, our engineering teacher, learning how to do, you know, little builds, um, how to program um, the, the robot brains to do specific tasks. Uh, we even bought a drone curriculum this year that we hope that we will be able to implement with our eighth graders in the spring. As I mentioned, these are all advanced level content courses and there are many of the students in the STEAM track that are um, above level math students. So they have the ability to take either Algebra One honors or even geometry honors for high school math credit. As we all know, the start of the 2021 school year was very different than in years past. Um, this is just a few photos of some of the things that we did um, in August to prepare for the beginning of the school year. Um, as you can see, the classrooms were empty because we started on distance learning just as the district did for the first few weeks of school. We actually did send home all the textbooks for the students as well, um, in addition to for them to log online to Google Classroom. So we prepared all of that in advance and had some days before school started for our parents to come um, pull up to the curb and as you can see in the picture all the way to the right, we were loading into their trunks, you know, all the textbooks, any of the school supplies that they had pre-ordered that were delivered to school, um, and then any technology devices that they had borrowed from our school. Um, we had many students in the situation that did not have um, computers or laptops of their own to use especially now that we're following a synchronous schedule and all children in the family have to log in at the same time all day long so they can no longer share one device among multiple siblings. So as you can see in that second picture from the left, that is actually all a lot of our computers that we had taken out of our computer labs and lined up in the cafeteria and then labeled the students' names on sticky notes that were being loaned out to the students that were enrolled in distance learning. I believe when the start of the year, over the summer, we had loaned out about, I want to say, over 125 laptops and then uh, probably about like 60 desktops to students throughout the school. Um, as they've returned to campus, they were bringing those devices back so this way we could put them back into the labs um, since they are not, um, they are using their textbooks and things like that when they're in the classroom. This year, we had to create that innovative learning plan since we do have students that have chosen um, to remain at home on distance learning. So we are continuing throughout the year to allow parents to have that choice of either having their students return to brick and mortar or remain at home in distance learning. Um, we have given our parents the option of choosing one or the other um, on a quarterly basis to align with our middle school um, quarters. So every nine weeks um, after the first quarter, if there was any students that were in distance learning whose parents then decided that they felt comfortable sending their child back, they were able to return for the second quarter and start brick and mortar at any time. Um, obviously, if you know parents are not comfortable or things come up, the children can always switch back to distance learning and then get re-enrolled in that Google Classroom and do all of their work from home. In order to prepare for this hybrid type model that we have, um, there was lots of professional development provided to our teachers uh, over the summer in preparation for the school year as we knew what was going to be coming down the pike 
as well as throughout the school year, um, after school, um, throughout the throughout the weeks, on teacher work days. It's just constant, ongoing professional development, specifically related to technology. Um, this year, I mentioned we are having more of a hybrid model. We do have students on campus as well as students at home. And the teachers on our campus are teaching to both students at the same time. So it's a hybrid model where we, let's say we have about eight to 10 students in the classroom physically on campus. The teacher is teaching to those students that are physically in the room, as well as having the students at home join virtually through Google Classroom, which then they will present that Google Meet up on the smart board so that the students in class can see their classmates at home and the students at home can see their classmates in school. Um, so they see the teacher interacting with the, with the students in the class. They see the teacher utilizing the whiteboard, the smart board, any anchor charge, any other materials that are in the classroom is then videoed and relayed to the students that are learning at home. Um, since the beginning of the year, we have provided the full array of services to both students in person and virtual, meaning any ESE services um, that our students are being provided with the ESE support teachers, speech and language, OT or PT. If they're here on campus, they will see the teachers in person for those services. If the students are enrolled in distance learning, then they will meet with those providers in the virtual Google Classrooms that we've set up for those teachers. We do have frequent progress monitoring, um, as always, with the mid-marking period progress reports, as well as the report cards at the end of each trimester and quarter. However, we are also increasing the level of communication with parents um, throughout, you know, throughout the month. Um, we're not waiting till that progress report or report card to speak to the parents about anything that they might be struggling in. Teachers are emailing parents on a regular basis, um, probably weekly, setting up parent conferences with parents um, right away from the first few weeks of school to try to communicate with them any areas that the students were struggling in and to set up goals for them for the year. There is a big focus on health and wellness this year. Um, obviously, with the whole COVID situation, we've updated all of our health, safety, and cleaning protocols. We've provided all of our teachers and staff um, with special product to use in the classroom so that as students are transitioning from room to room, once one class leaves, then they clean the tables and the chairs um, in between the next group of students coming in. We've hired additional custodial staff as well. Um, so for a small school like us with just over 500 students, we have three full-time and a part-time custodian on staff. Um, just here throughout the day, cleaning the main areas, um, the door handles, the lunch rooms, um, the water fountains, the staff bathrooms, student bathrooms, multiple, multiple times throughout the day, just any of those frequently high touch surfaces. We do perform temperature checks of all of our staff and students as they arrive on campus each day. Uh, staff must come through the front office and they get their temperature scanned by the front office staff. Um, that's basically the way of checking in. We wanna make sure that everyone arriving on campus is fever free. Um, and then all students as well. We do not have buses. It's all parent drop off through, through the car line or students that are walking or riding their bikes to school. So we have multiple staff members out um, in the parking lots each morning, scanning the temperatures of every child before they step foot out of their car onto our campus. Um, we are also checking temperatures throughout the day. We know um, people will show up in the morning feeling fine and then things happen. So we do um, check temperatures throughout the day, before lunch, and then again, when students that stay in aftercare are arriving in aftercare since they're here, some of them till six o'clock at night. We have added an additional clinic um, in our front office, an isolation clinic in the event that a student has a fever or develops a fever, they must be kept separate from the other students that are in the clinic. So we did have to put that into place um, in over the summer in preparation for the school year. Just as many of the schools have done, we've created special lines down the middle of the halls and put signage on the floor with arrows directing the traffic in the halls. Um, so students know, you know, to stay to the right, which direction to walk in. So we kind of have one way hallway transition patterns. 
We've also created staggered transitions for our middle school classes. So this way we don't have all the students being released into the hallways at the same time. Um, we release, you know, the sixth grades and then five minutes later, 10 minutes later, the seventh grade and so forth. So they are switching classes a few minutes behind each other to help alleviate some of the crowding in the halls. Currently, we have 45% of our entire student population back on campus. So it is still very um, empty in the halls. 55% um, are still virtual. We anticipate to maybe have another five to 10% join us after the winter break. But again, it is parent choice. Um, so as long as they are contacting administration in advance to let us know that they want to return to campus, we are allowing that. Um, and then with a one week notice um, of them when they want to come back. We've also is, um, added extra hand sanitizer stations in the hallways and all the entry and exit doors. All of our classrooms are always already supplied with the um, hand sanitizer bottles for the teachers to use with the students, but we've added these extra stations um, as students are coming in in the morning, going in and out of the cafeteria, um, key locations throughout the buildings. We've also added water bottle refill stations. So we've closed down all of the water fountains. So this way students are not, you know, touching um, the same surface and drinking from the same water fountains. All of our students are required to bring um, plastic refillable water bottles. So that is also part of our green initiative this year. Um, and the, the water fountain refiller stations actually will count and tell us how many plastic water bottles have been saved by refilling um, those water bottles. We have limited the amount of visitors we are allowing on campus um, to pretty much none, unless it is a contracted um, service um, repair person that needs to be on our campus. Um, they all must be screened in the front office as well with the pre-screening pre -screening questions and have their temperature checked before being allowed on campus. We have switched all of our meetings this year um, to virtual. That includes staff meetings. Um, as well as parent conferences or any meetings through ESE and school-based team. Um, we have provided social emotional learning training for our staff over the summer in advance of the school year. And our teachers are doing daily student check-ins with the students at the beginning of classes, just trying to help build that rapport um, and those relationships with the students, especially those that are in distance learning um, and possibly dealing with um, issues you know, that we can't necessarily um, help with since they're not here physically in our school. Um, but trying to check in with the students and see how they're doing, um, just rather than just focusing on academics, but focusing on, you know, just the overall wellness of our students. Um, and we've also increased the amount of staff and student recognition programs we have. We felt that it was very important to kind of look at that social emotional piece um, for the students as well as the staff. On that note, we have um, done some community outreach uh, this year. Prior to school starting, I mentioned that we had parents that pre-ordered school supplies. Typically, those boxes are delivered to campus and ready for students on the first day of school, so the parents don't have to carry in bags and bags of school supplies the first day. This year, with um, them starting virtually in distance learning, we had them pick up those boxes of school supplies. However, there were some students um, that either did not order or maybe could not afford school supplies. So we made sure that we went out and had school supplies readily available for those families that needed it, um, consisting of um, paper, pencils, glue, scissors, rulers, anything that they might need to do any of their distance learning work at home. Um, but obviously because they're not in the classroom using this classroom supplies and they might not have that at home. So we made sure the kids had those markers and crayons and anything that they might need for school uh, when we were out on distance learning with everyone. That second bullet there, there's actually a typo. It should say unwrap the wave, not unwarp. Um, unwrap the waves was an initiative put forth by the Loggerhead Marine Life Center in Juneau Beach. Um, they do a candy wrapper recycling program each year around Halloween where they ask schools to collect the candy wrappers and save the candy wrappers from just being trashed and possibly ending up um, in the oceans and landfills. Um, this year, Western Academy participated again, and we actually came in third place um, in the county uh, out of all the schools that did participate. So our students did participate in that, even our students in remote learning. 
We asked them to collect any of the candy wrappers from you know, the month of October leading up to Halloween, put them in a plastic bag. They had to count them themselves and write their name and the amount that they collected on the bag. I believe our top student who won a week of free dress down turned in 420 wrappers themselves. <laughs> so that's a lot of candy, but that they were saving it up for since last year. <laughs> Um, we've also done food for families over Thanksgiving um, and anticipate helping some more over the winter break. Um, this is uh, in partnership with the district school food service. Uh, we have about 15 families that picked up the food boxes over the Thanksgiving break so their students had, you know, breakfast, lunches, and dinners um, for the week that we were off on Thanksgiving. And we have about another 20, 25 families that are going to be taking the food over the winter break. Um, so we are very grateful for the school food service um, for offering that to our families as well. And then the most recent thing that we did um, is generosity. This is something that our staff does each December where um, dress down is a big thing around here. If our teachers get a day that they can wear jeans, they're like over the moon. So we collect $10 um, and the teachers can then wear jeans for the entire month of December um, every day that school's in session. Typically, it is just teachers and staff that participate, but this year we opened it up to our students as well. Um, and we collected 1800, over $1,800 um, for Geniorosity that we then used to buy toys to supplement our toy drive. So that was um, you know, a great thing for our students to participate in this year. Um, and thank, we're very grateful and thankful to our staff and our students for the generosity. And that's just a picture down there on the right-hand side of all the toys, well, not even all of them, that's about half of the toys here in my office right now um, that we will be donating to the local toy drive. Um, I mentioned that you know we focus not just on high academic program here, but specifically this year, we're very concerned about you know, the social emotional well-being um, of our students and staff. So some of the things that we're doing here at Western Academy to focus on that is our STOMP tickets. Um, STOMP is part of our positive behavior support. Um, you can see the picture to the right there about our different guidelines that we have of safety, trustworthiness, ownership, motivation, and positivity. Those are the traits that we try to um, recognize our students in each month um, for their behavior in the classrooms, in the lunchrooms, in the hallways, just around campus. This year with most of our students on distance learning, we've created these virtual stomp tickets. So instead of an actual physical ticket we would give to the kids that they would put into a raffle, it's a virtual like Google form that the teachers fill out with the child's name and we'll get a little description about what the good behavior they saw and it gets entered into the raffle. And we pick a couple students' names each month, recognize them on the morning announcements, and then they earn prizes. Um, we've also increased our student of the month and character counts campaigns by announcing the names of those students on the morning announcements, um, putting it out on our social media. And then because some of those students are in distance learning, we've created those yard signs that we then will go and deliver to the students that aren't coming to school physically so that they can place that in their yards um, for the month, just as a little special honor and recognition. We've also um, allowed students to have special reward on Fridays for good behavior. So we have free dress down Fridays. I mentioned that we do the daily check-ins for social emotional learning with the students and staff. And then we also have an ongoing partnership with Ingram and Associates to provide counseling um, to any of the students on our campus that may be in need of that or any other mental health um, services. And then we also wanted to focus on the social emotional well-being of our staff. Um, you know that this is very trying times. Um, it is a very stressful time as our teachers are working harder and harder each day to reach the needs of all learners, not just those on campus, but also those learning remotely. Um, so we wanted our staff to be able to have some activities for them to, you know, relax and kind of socialize outside of, you know, the teaching day. Um, Obviously, with certain restrictions in place, um, we can't have all the same activities that we would have in a typical year. Um, but we do the teacher of the month and we will announce those on the announcements. The teachers will get gift cards for being recognized as the teacher staff um, you know, for each month. We also post it out on our social media pages um, so that our 
families and students can comment. Um, we've implemented teacher and staff appreciation days monthly where we'll have little treats for the teachers in the staff lounges just as a little way of saying thank you and that we appreciate all their hard work. And then some of the clubs that we have ongoing, um, obviously a walking club, because we know um, getting out in the fresh air is a great thing. So we do have some teachers that go walking together after school. Uh, we've started a virtual book club that meets once a month for teachers. And then we've also started an activity after school on Thursdays called Thankful Thursdays with Marcy. Marcy is one of our um, ESE teachers here. Um, she is very into mindfulness and gratitude. And so she hosts a mindfulness session um, for our teachers on Thursdays after school. It's basically just a very relaxing 30 minutes to kind of unwind um, after a really stressful day. Um, all of these things have really helped to boost the morale of our staff. And I know that they really do appreciate um, the time that you know the staff spends getting together. So without further ado, I would like to leave you with a little holiday cheer. Um, typically each year when we do this presentation, if I get December, we usually have our chorus come in and do a little holiday performance for everyone there in person. Um, since that is not possible, uh, this year we've had Ms. Hubbard, our music teacher, have our K-5 students practice and sing holiday songs that we've recorded and then put out on our morning announcements since we've made those virtual this year so our students at home can be part of that as well. So I would like to just play a couple little clips for you um, to give you a little holiday cheer. And the first one is our second graders and they are singing Light the Candle. Uh-oh, let's see if this link works. And then there's one more for you that we'll do. It is our fourth graders. And they're singing Feliz Navidad.
Thank you, Principal Manriquez. Does anyone have questions? I just want to ask her about the drone program that's uh, coming next year. That's a, an exciting program. So tell me what's just a little bit about it real quick. What does it uh, entail and what are the qualifications? Uh, well, we have ordered the curriculum. We're still having our teacher go through the training. Um, we're hoping that that's going to help supplement our eighth grade uh, engineering robotics program. So he still has to go through the training and kind of decide whether or not it's something we're going to be able to do this year or if we need to wait um, until there's a few less restrictions for us uh, with the students sharing all the materials since we only have five for the class to use. That's great. Mm -hmm. Good thinking, good it innovation. Is. Okay, and uh, next we have a presentation by Principal Mikowski from H.L. Johnson. Can't hear. Well, she has two things up there. It says so. you're self-muted. I don't know if I'm messing it up because I'm um, logged in with her. So I what can are hear you. you. To... Okay, let me see. Oh, now I. Think... <laughs> But who's on? We were gonna both try to be on to present. So can only one person at a time be unmuted? More than one person can be unmuted, but because you're logged in as the same person, I'm not sure. Do you have, Jacqueline, on your end, both of them are unmuted, both of the Jennifer Mikowskis, there should be two on your list. Yeah, there's two. Let's see. Click mute. Okay, she's muted. Okay, so I need to change the presenter. Let's see. Okay, okay, because I think you can hear. Can you hear me now? Yes, okay. we can yes. hear you. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, so I need to change her. Change her the presenter then. Whose screen is going to be? Sh presenting mine's going to be presenting okay Let's see let me know i have it pulled up when you can see it i think i'm doing the same one okay there we go we can see it okay okay well good evening everybody um, I'm Jennifer Mikowski, the principal at H.L. Johnson, and I have with me tonight my assistant principal, uh, Danielle Agadello, who is going to also present with us. Um, just a little bit, um, make your choice. Currently, right now, we have 434 students that are brick and mortar, um, 331 that are virtual. Um, our survey for the district opens up again January 4th for the second um, half of the year. It'll close on the 11th, and then those students that choose, that make a, a change their choice, um, will begin on February 2nd. Currently, our enrollment numbers are 765. Um, we have had 93 students withdraw since um, we started tracking it in June. Um, listed below kind of shows you where um, all of our students, all of those 93 students went. Um, a lot of them ended up moving to other schools within Palm Beach County. Um, they ended up, because of the um, COVID-19, needed um, to move in with other families. Um, and so a lot of them moved to other schools within the district and also moved out of state and a lot of home, um, home education as well. 
Okay, so moving forward with COVID-19, a lot of things at our school have changed. So as for our visitors right now, we are still not allowing anybody other than a district employee um, on campus. So everybody is still outside of our doors. Um, any parents need to come pick up anything, our front office staff will um, answer the phone and go out and bring the item to them. Um, the people that do come in, as far as our district staff, they will be screened and you can see here with our front office, how we have the plexiglass to protect our staff behind. Face coverings, um, our faculty and staff were provided with five cloth masks as well as a face shield um, so that they were given the option to wear which they would like. Students were also given five cloth masks. K through two were smaller gray ones. And then our three through five had larger black masks. We also had a donation from the village that we were greatly appreciative of. So thank you that um, our a lot of our students um, will come in and come out of those car lines and realize as soon as mom's pulling away that they've forgotten their mask and it's a moment of panic. But right when they walk in, we have masks to share with them. So students were also given a lanyard so that they can hook their masks on. So when they are at recess or lunch, their mask is not on the floor or lost. We have hand sanitizer stations. Again, as I stated earlier, a lot has changed because of COVID-19, but our main priority is making sure that our faculty and students are um, safe as far as keeping themselves clean. So we have hand sanitizer stands located throughout the campus. It's in our bus loop, our cafeteria, BPK entrance, entrance to our building 12 as well by the the stairs, upstairs and downstairs, and the main restrooms, and then biker and walker gates. So those are continued to be cleaned daily and refilled by our custodial staff. Um, we also have throughout our campus signage. Um, and this year we tried to make sure that it was uh, student friendly, kid friendly for our little ones. Um, so we have Jackie wash your hand signs that are placed in every restroom. Um, we have paw print stickers that along the walls in our two stories so that um, our students make sure that they stay six feet apart. Um, the decals, we also have spray painted paw prints um, that are within our one story building so that our students know um, that they are to stay six feet apart, whether they're sitting down waiting to go into the classroom or walking with their teachers in the halls. Um, we also have signs posted throughout campus um, just to remind them that they need to stay six feet apart. If there is a place that students aren't, um, aren't allowed to go to, we do have little stop signs posted up um, and just reminding them on social distancing um, also around campus. Um, our school-wide positive behavior support um, came up with our PAWS um, this year. It's our P-A-W-S, PAWS, we're healthiest. And so um, it's a little chant that we have our students do so that just to remind them um, to make sure they're washing their hands, wearing their masks, they're staying six feet apart. As far as our classroom configurations right now, we are still lucky enough that every classroom is able to be maintained with six feet apart. So all the students in each classroom are six feet apart in there. Um, Right now we have the different, we have blended where the teachers have a class of students both virtually and in person. We did have a couple teachers that were distance learners. Currently right now we only have one that is remaining on distance learning. So she is only having a class participate in distance learning. And then one class in our campus that only has brick and mortar that does not have distance learning. But the majority of our teachers are dealing with the blended model at this time. Um, the cafeteria, the teachers go ahead and escort the students into the cafeteria. The students um, were starting to switch it over where they can be six feet apart within the line, but currently right now the students will go directly to their assigned table and row and sit on a paw print that is marked with their seat. So each table only has two students sitting at each table. 
then the students are brought there to their lunch by cafeteria staff and during the break in between lunches the cafeteria staff will um, disinfect the tables so here you can see the far left picture is where the paw prints are six feet apart for the students when they are leaving the cafeteria and entering the cafeteria the middle table is where each student is sitting on each paw print and then the far right is where our rows and um, rows are these were just some signs to bring some festive lights to our cafeteria we want to make sure that our jaguars remember to keep the areas clean have good manners work together make sure that they're reliable and engaged so this has definitely brought some light to our cafeteria. Um, and for our fun parts, oh, go ahead, Danielle. Oh, go ahead. Oh, um, and for our fine arts, our students are escorted to their fine arts teachers. Um, all of our classes, except for our STEAM and art, we installed in those two rooms, we did install sneeze guards, um, just to make sure that the students had that barrier in between our PE music guidance and our media, we had enough space to make students were social distanced, um, but we did add in the sneeze guards then. Um, but the students enjoy being able to get up and to walk and to move um, from their classrooms to be able to go into their fine arts. Um, this just kind of shows you one of our pictures of the media center where um, we also have the plexiglass for our media specialist and our media clerk. Um, our arrival this year is a little bit different. Um, we have our car loop, our biker walker gate, and the bus loop only. We do not allow any parents to do any um, walk-up drop-offs. Um, morning care we have open from 6.45 to 7.15. Um, our students, once they're dropped off in the car line, they go into the cafeteria to grab a grab-and-go breakfast, and then they head straight to class to them into the classrooms. Um, so there's no congregating in the cafeteria. The students all grab it, and they go, and they go straight to their rooms. Our, our bus, our biker walker students also have breakfast that they pick up, a grab and go, and they do that in the courtyard. Um, and then they report straight to class as well. So this will minimize the number of students we have um, one place at one time. Um, our dismissal, we've staggered our dismissal times. So that way our students are not, um, area. there's not too many kids at one time. So we have our buses leave a little bit earlier Then we have our car students and we have them separated to keep the six foot um, distance. So we have some of our students that are in the art room, some that are in the music room, and some that are in the cafeteria for dismissal. Um, and then we also then at the end, we have our biker and walkers um, both are then escorted to that gate um, after our car riders. So again, um, just to keep that social distancing in between. We are a current feeding site. So every Tuesday and Thursday from 8.30 a.m. till 9.30, we have parents that come and get boxes of fresh produce, um, milk, juice, fruit. And then this Thursday, we have really extended out and done several call outs because this Thursday is going to be the big distribution where it's going to be almost 12 pounds of food going out. So we look forward to our students getting that on um, this Thursday. With everything going on and making sure that we're keeping everybody safe and healthy, these are just a couple of our fun things that we've been doing across our campus. So in October, we had the Storybook Character Day. Um, usually this is a big parade that we have at our school, but with making sure to keep everybody social distance, um, each classroom did it on their own. So the students were still able to dress up as their storybook character. They had a lot of fun with it, as well as our students participating at home. We then had our um, Thanksgiving powwow. So the students were able to learn about turkeys and Indians and pilgrims. Um, and again, if you look at our picture in the far right, our students that are at home are participating with this as well. So they're not missing a beat since they're at home. We then were um, extremely blessed by our PTO. 
came, um, one PTO member came and assisted to make our sensory walk outside. Since the students are not able to play the typical recess games that they are usually able to play, now they have these in our center courtyard. So tiptoe, the bunny hop, the walk, there's a zigzag. So several things that they're able to do to have fun while outside. And then uh, Walmart did a huge donation. So we had our teachers come in and do a shopping spree. There was binders and papers, colored pencils, crayons, um, multicolored crayons, which was fabulous. The teachers enjoyed those, um, scissors, binders. So for a good a week or so, the teachers came through and did a sh little shopping spree. Um, this year we did an internship uh, where we partnered up with Royal Palm Beach High School and Dr. Armas, and we had one of his assistant principals come to our school. Um, his motto ended up being at our school for three weeks where she had an opportunity to learn how um, an elementary school runs and the differences um, at an elementary versus at a high school and the similarities between the two. Um, was actually able to, we gave her experiences in um, learning about our different interventions, you know, observing um, some of our teachers, looking at the budget at an elementary level, our school-based team, um, which is huge um, down in elementary, master schedule and how we create the master schedule. Um, so there were several things that um, Dr. Armas and I had come up with with Ms. Amato on things that we really felt that she needed to um, be able to experience while she was at HL Johnson. Um, and so I think this was a great opportunity for her to be able to, you know, compare both of, um, you know, her high school experience with the elementary experience and see how, um, you know, how, how things are down at the, um, the elementary level and see where things start. So um, this was a wonderful thing. Um, it was nice for us to actually have her for three full weeks um, with the high school with their numbers being a little bit lower, um, they were able to do it. And we were thankful for Dr. Armas um, for allowing her to come over to us. Um, I do have um, up next questions, but before I do that, I would like to um, to say for those of you who are on the, um, the, the uh, advisory board and are, are not aware, I will be retiring at the end of this month. Um, I do want to thank uh, Julie Highsmith, um, Vice Mayor Hamera and all of the board members for um, everything they've done for the support um, in all of these meetings that we've had. And um, I would also like to thank um, Marcia Andrews um, and Valerie and um, Vivian for their support. Um, I couldn't have done all of this without them. And so I really thank everything they've done. And last but not least, I cannot forget to thank Dr. Armas um, for being my mentor and for helping me get where I am. And so, you know, I wish everybody the best of luck. Um, I will miss everyone dearly. I'll miss my HLJ family more than they will ever know um, and all of you. And so um, I just wanted to end with that. So thank you very much for everything. Thank you, Principal Mikowski. Before we... Um... Take any questions. I want to say on the behalf of the Village of Royal Palm Beach and the entire Education Advisory Board and the parents of HL Johnson, thank you for everything that you've done. Uh, we're grateful for your many years of dedication to Royal Palm Beach schools, your, your three years assistant principal at the high school, your almost five years at HL Johnson. It's been a pleasure to watch HL Johnson's successes underneath your leadership. And thank you and best of luck with everything that you're gonna be doing. Thank you, I appreciate that. Um, does anybody have any questions they would like to ask? Uh, Principal Mikowski, uh, number one, thank you for your service. Uh, it's amazing, you're, you're gonna be a huge loss for this organization, there's no doubt. The 93 students, I know that uh, that bothers you and it's, uh, I, I really would like your input about that trend and you know how it happened and you know, wow, how do we, not make that happen again, right? Yeah, and um, it's really this is the the lowest uh, number of enrollment since I've been at the school. Every year right. we increased our enrollment, and so it was it was a lot for us to 
that, and that's why it was so important when I saw it in June that we wanted to make sure we checked to figure out where those kids were going, um, you know, so that we can try to get them back. Um, you know, I know this year right now we have about 60 or so that have applied for our choice. Um, hopefully we're going to start getting those kids back. Those home ed students are going to start wanting to come back to school once everything can it, hopefully will get back to normal soon. So I have a feeling next year it's just going to go back up and we're going to be almost at that 800 um, where we've been, you know, the last few years. So they're there. We want, we want them. <laughs> yeah, I did. It's... We already had five come back just this week that want to come back in January. So they're already starting to come back to us. Yeah. So uh, I'd like to ask you, Principal Mikowski, mm -hmm. since you're leaving and uh, you have insight, what about coming back full time? What are your thoughts about that? Mm -hmm. um, about the students coming back full time? Yep. Or? yep. Getting the getting the system back to full time. Um, without they come back to school. I want to make sure I understand. So without them having the option to be distance yep. learners. Yep. I think that you know the district's philosophy. I think is what we kind of need to 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 go with. You know. And their philosophy, and I think we all agree, is that right now the parents need to have an opportunity for that choice. You know, we can't make choices for them. Um, and, you know, some of them are still very concerned and very worried about COVID and their children getting it and bringing it home. And, you know, um, we do everything we can to, to keep them safe at school. And we have a lot of our families, like Ms. Agadello said, that are starting to come back to the building. Um, but I think, you know, the stance with the district is the stance that you know, we all take and, and you know, with that's what's best, you know, right now, even my own daughter staying home because she chooses to, she wants to um, instead, and this is her senior year in high school. So she's, you know, wanting to be home and, you know, forcing her to go back, you know, is, it's a tough call for a parent. So. Thank you, Principal Kowski. I appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, any other questions? Okay, and then Bill, did you want to talk about something else? Okay. Hi, you guys. I'm going to talk with you, Ms. Andrews and Valerie, this is the day to actually get the two of you. And I have some respect for both of you. This is please just a message I'm likely to share. Okay, so um, one of the pieces here. You can hear everything in there. No. Okay, how's that better? Yeah. So it, the issue becomes I respect you two the most. I want you to share the message. Ms. Managers, I want you to share with the board. And uh, Ms. Haynes, I need you to share this with the, with the thing. This thing ain't working. This piece is almost as insane as I've ever seen education in my 30 years. I've got a 30 year education. I've been a college president. I taught leadership for 25 years. I taught online for 15 years. I have a son who's been online and face to face, both an epic failure. I've got a wife that's a sixth grade teacher. Her and the 20 colleagues around that I've talked to are so burnt out. They're so miserable. We're going to have such a teacher shortage here. It's going to be really, really something we haven't even looked at yet. And I need to understand why. You have a superintendent that's making $350,000 to create leadership, guys, to have a clear pathway. I don't see a clear pathway to us getting back to where we are. It, my son is struggling at this piece, and they're not learning. They're not learning. It, and we can't kid ourselves to say that they are. And I, it, the faculty, it's not even close to their fault. The administrators, I get it. They're doing everything they can, but we're not built for this. And somehow there should be a roadmap with milestones, with real measurable results to say, how, when are we getting back or what's the plan to get back? And that means empowering principals to get with the parents, to talk to people, to get them to pick faculty, to get on an advisory group that helps us move that way. I've never seen this in a plan to something this big that we're gonna have a plan to get ourselves to where this is. And the only thing I've seen is we have to wait until January to figure it out if you're coming back or not. So to me, you've got 170,000 students that are suffering. you got 20,000 employees. This is 200,000 people that are never going to be the same. 
And so I, I just need to have some clarity about what we're doing. Why hasn't the plan been put out there and vetted and, and given us milestones? I need to understand that. Yes, ma'am, please, both of you. Can you hear me? Thank you. Can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, wonderful. Well, um, Bill, I want you to know that we know that we have 7,000 students uh, in the county that we're trying to find. Some of them are not even able to hook up to the computers. Um, our homeschool, as you heard from the principal's uh, presentation, some are in charge, some everywhere. And it's really tough out there right now. We know that a lot of children are not making it because we start talking about um, remote learning and not having a teacher. That, that doesn't work. The best working uh, solution is to have the teacher in front of the child. So we know all of these things that we're doing in this new normal is really detrimental to our children. I was so happy to see the singers from Western mm -hmm. Academy feel so good because it's hard out there for the children. They're trying their very, very best and for the teachers. The school district of Palm Beach County is working on a plan of action to be able to be shared with you all as soon as possible. We were looking at the possibility of uh, maybe, maybe thinking that we had to open all of our schools in the second semester, but the governor as well as others indicated that parents still want a choice. The school district wants, wants parents to have a choice. Students want to have a choice. So many of them have chosen. We got half of our children at home and the other half uh, <clears throat> in brick and mortar. And we know we're working on a vaccine now that's coming. We now do have rapid testing. So we have a lot of things that's going to help us to get back to normal. But we, we've got a lot of ground to make up for all these children that we've lost, all these teachers who have suffered and the administrators who have suffered through this pandemic trying to make it work. When we looked at what we saw here tonight, this is replicated about 180 plus times all over Palm Beach County School District to try to make sure that we meet the needs of the children, the families, the teachers. That's what the administration is doing with our superintendent and leadership of Valerie Haynes and other region superintendents. But we know from calls across the nation, it's not working and we're losing so many children. Our goal is to have input from you. We want to get your voices. We want to hear them. This is why we're sending the surveys out, to hear what you have to say. And we're building a plan. The superintendent is building a plan for how we come back together. But right now, we're still at a moment in time when we're still in this pandemic. And we've got to help our children with home visits. Uh, we've written an individual plans for each of our regions. This is the central region on how go out and knock on doors and work with parents. Many people don't have jobs today, you know, uh, can't feed their children. Thank you for the food that you're going to be giving away. Two weeks, people will have no food to eat. So we're dealing with so many crises right now to truly help our children, our teachers, our schools because of this pandemic. And yes, there is going to be a strategic plan that you're going to be looking at that's coming forth very shortly about where we go from here. We're dialoguing with New York, Chicago, and all these big districts across the country because they're all experiencing the same things. I have to commend the Palm Beach County School District leadership because for nine months, we have made it happen. And it hasn't been perfect, as you know. It's been tough. And a lot of our kids have lost ground. But we started back in March just with remote. And we moved into that cycle quickly. And as we started this school year, we've been able to do the blended model but we know none of that is perfect because we're losing so many children. We're losing teachers and staff. And we all are concerned about our health. And that's something I know that you all are concerned about. So we're trying to put the pieces of the puzzle together to try to come up with a plan with input from you, uh, Bill, and others from the Education Advisory Committee, the parents, and building a portfolio on how we move from here. But right now, we, we don't want to be detrimental to families, to children, to anybody. And we're just taking it one step at a time until we can see our pathway a little better. We can put out something in writing for everyone. 
Miss Andrews, I appreciate that. I appreciate your perspective and sharing that. That's very kind. I appreciate that. But there's a couple things I want to address. Surveys to parents. I don't go to a parent and ask them about brain surgery. I ask a neurosurgeon. So asking parents what they want in an educational setting really doesn't make sense when we could ask the educators about what they think it is. I think the survey instrument, I'll be honest with you, it's my background in research. It wasn't super designed, but it was what we did. We had to do, but the educators know. The educators know. Parents don't always know. And yeah, you get, a, you get a, a, an input, but an input is part of a decision. It's not the whole decision. And we haven't included the people that are on the front lines to do that. And the plan was started in March, right? And then we didn't really have anything to send everybody back in August. So they told us they were going to give us money. So we did that. And now it's already December. And I don't well, see I would, anything. Yeah, Bill, I'd like to add a little bit more to that. Mm -hmm. I think Valerie can add to this. The uh, principals, as well as the, the regional offices, they know the children that were le that's being left behind, the ones that are having difficulty in keeping kids can do remote well and they're, they're progressing. Some cannot. Many of the ones that's coming every day are having trouble because of all of the other issues, the social and emotional pieces. Mm -hmm. the monitoring piece that we're doing. The governor has required all schools, charter schools, uh, district public schools and others to write a plan on how we're gonna help these children that are being left behind. That plan is due tomorrow in Cassie. You'll be seeing that, but one piece of the puzzle, we've got to roll out a bigger plan on how we help our children. And we know who they are. We know where they are. And we know we've got a lot of work to do. And we've just been in this, in this uh, pandemic and it's been so heartbreaking because we've been doing the best that we can. I commend the teachers. I see you in the classroom keep their masks on all day, the little elementary children. And they're doing such a superb job and listening and learning. Those that are on, on the computer, on remote, uh, the teachers are teaching simultaneously. All of that is not 100% instruction for great academic achievement. We know that. And I promise you, the leaders at the top are working on a system so that when we can find our way to that level, and it's coming because the governor has demanded us to send something to show that we're keeping up with every kid that's missing, all those that are behind, and what the action plan is going to be for them. So we're working, we are going to be reaching out to the community and the parents for the next level, and that's coming shortly. Now, you want to add to that? Yeah, please, Ms. Hayes. She's self mute. Still can't hear. Mm -hmm. Oh, there we go. Hi, how are you? Good evening. Good evening, everyone. Hi, can you hear me? Evening. You can hear me. Okay. Yeah. So, um, then after we, after I answer your question, Bill, I really want I um. I really want to recognize Jennifer, leave, you know, before I, I don't want to forget, please. That, that is like, that's something that I really wanted to, to do tonight. Um, but to answer your question, so um, we have been working Assurance 3, which is part of the state's plan, but it's not just because it's part of the state's plan. It's because it's the right thing to do by our children. It's to progress monitor how they are doing, not only on a day-to-day -day basis, but also on their assessments to see if the students are making adequate progress or not. Right, so schools have been working with their families, with our parents, for students that have not, and identifying those students and reaching out to the parents, for students that have not been making adequate progress. Although it's part of the state plan, it's not something that we're doing just because it's part of the state plan. It's because it's the right thing to do, and that is something that we have done year after year, monitoring the students closely. The other piece that goes along with it is that you really do have to provide that you have to provide that choice to parents on how their students are going to be instructed, whether it's at brick mortar or at home. Because I'm going to tell you something. It. I hear you, but but I, I hear you. But if you take that choice away, the parents are going to go somewhere else, and they're going to go to virtual school, or they're going to go. Say, at least we're trying to make an attempt to keep our families uh, in our schools, and we're doing the very best possible. We even 
we've even done some creative look like you see with H.L. Johnson, where one of the teachers is working with only distance learners and then the other teacher's teacher with brick and mortar. And that's to avoid having the simultaneous teaching, which is quite challenging. So we're trying to do the very best we can within our school setting to you be able to provide everybody the best education. You can't Agreed. please everyone. Agreed, but when you have a, about half, 50% of our parents who are selected to keep their students at home because they're scared of sending their students to school, we have to also listen to, to what the parents are. As part are of the thinking. decision, as part of it, not as right. a sole purpose of what you're doing. And I'm there's sorry? plenty of research. There's, it's a part of the decision. It's not the whole decision. And plenty of districts have already sent everybody back and gone that way. Plenty of research, even Fauci said everybody should be back, right? These are pieces. And, and I, look, I'm not saying tomorrow, Valerie, I'm not. Like I said, this is a message. The issue becomes I haven't seen a clear pathway with milestones as to how we're going to get everybody to that level of what we're doing. I know there's lots of support things, but there's got to be a vision that's been externalized to the public in a dashboard or whatever they want to do to say, here's what's going to happen. Here's the milestones. When we hit a milestone, we go, ah, here we go. That's how we move. Here's our next step. That's what I'm looking for, Valerie. Okay, so I can share with you that, that the way that we're working through this process this year is that now that we're going with Make Your Toys 2.0, which, which parents are now having an opportunity to, again, select on how they're going to finish out the rest of the year, but there is a disclaimer, and that is something that we did send home in the letter that we sent home last Friday on December 11th. And that disclaimer is that if the student, any student who is not showing adequate progress, the school is contacting the parent and making the request for the parent to come back to school. And, and if not, and if not, then what the consequences will be for the student educationally, right? So that is part of our process for the second semester as well. So what if the kids are going from A's to C's? they don't hit on your radar as it's not completing the proper level and you've got someone now that's disengaged they're comfortable at home because i can look at my phone i can play the game i can do all this and then just kind of do tasks for the class you know wh where are those people going to go where are we tracking them well we are uh, tracking them four different ways So one one way is through attendance right if the students are not logging in or the students are not completing their work those are the students that are being flagged for this is not working for that student and have those conversations between teacher and parent because to your point it needs to be you know the expert right in education to tell the parent this is not working for your child the parent is going to trust and is always trusted in their system to make the very best or help make the very best decision for the children so to your point that is uh, certainly a step that has already been taken in many cases and will continue to move forward would taken as well. That's two of those pieces. The other piece is through the assessments. We have required assessments that the students are taking on a regular basis, depending on the instruction that's happening in the school. And students that are not performing in those assessments, which then will show that they're not engaged appropriately or they're, you know, uh, faking the system for a lack of a better word. Those are the that's another flag. So those are the students that we're also looking at returning. And so what is our plan to upskill these kids of all they missed after this is over? So that is part of the that is part of the the well, we're calling it we're not calling it an acceleration plan because we already have uh, an acceleration plan at the district, but it is an, a, a student support plan that is also being presented to the state. And so with that, uh, with that support plan for those students that are moved out of distance learning, the schools are required to provide support and additional instruction to their students that have already missed what they've already missed and the reason as to why they need to come back. So that is part of the plan. Uh, the other piece is looking at extended learning opportunities through the summer, expanding that after school tutorials, evening tutorials that can be done either at school or in the evening, and in some cases, even Saturday tutorials. So that's also part of uh, the plan that, that is being developed for the second semester to continually try to work on catching up the students. We also have course recovery in high school, um, you know, and uh, yeah. other means. Yeah, I'm just getting to the kids that aren't going to show up on that thing and haven't learned and college is coming up and some of the things they're going to have to do, Valerie, that's all. Again, you know, I think part of this role at the Educational Advisory Board is to question and to 
get clarity on all this. And that's what this is, again, this is not against the system, but I just not used to seeing or haven't seen the dashboard of the plan or it hasn't been externalized uh, of what we're doing. And, you know, if we lose 50 teachers or 100 teachers because they just can't do this anymore, what, you know, there's just got to be some real forethought coming out of this, Valerie. That's all. And I thank right. you both, and, and Marcia, understood. Valerie. Yeah. And understood. And and know that the plan right now is being finalized. It is being presented to the state uh, tomorrow. And so I'll be able to speak a little bit more um, to the plan when we come back next time. Okay. Okay. Again, thank you both. I appreciate your time and in depth answers, and willingness to take on this subject. I thank you. All right. Thank you. Do you want me to go ahead and continue on? Yes. Go ahead. Because I would love. I'm sorry. I didn't. But please, please know, do. Things, thank you. One of the things that I wanted to make sure is that we celebrate Jennifer Mikowski. We are gonna miss her so, so much. And on behalf of our school district and on behalf of Central Region, and certainly the Village of Royal Palm, teachers, students, and families, we thank you for the 22 years of service and almost five years at HL Johnson. And uh, you're just, you're gonna be missed. It, it really is bittersweet. I know that that is something that you know you've got to do what you've got to do for you, right? But we are going to miss you so much. There's some major, huge, big shoes. They're like skis to fill. So thank you, thank you. So round of applause if you can all help me. Virtual way of doing it. Dude, we love you. Thank you, thank you. All right. So that's the one one thing that I wanted to make sure that we do right. As you know, that we are in the process of selecting the next principal of H L Johnson. Um, I do want to thank you for those of you that participated in the focus group for communities. I know I was there present. I was listening to you and we, I listened to you and the criteria is spot on with what you've asked. So we are working diligently to make sure that we select just the right leader uh, to take on HL Johnson and uh, to continue the work that Ms. Mikowski and team have worked so hard to, to, to do thus far. So uh, with that said, um, we are looking at the passive board on run of show on schedule is to um, have the interviews on Friday. We want to move fairly quickly through this process, but not too quick. We want to be we want to make sure that we are really selecting the perfect person for for um, HL Johnson. So we should know something hopefully by the end of this week or when we come back from break. All right. With that said, I also wanted to share with you that this last um, Friday, if you haven't seen it yet as a parent, our schools in the village of Royal Palm and the rest of Central Region and the district sent home letter number six. And so in letter number six, we included important information that we wanted to make sure that we share district updates. Um, and one of them is in regards to the governor's executive order, which we talked a little bit about that bill is what we talked about is, is uh, the expectation of the executive order is that we submit another plan for the second half of the year of which a good portion of the plan is what is already in place but we're adding more layers to it as we recognize that we need to do more right we need to do a just tweak for students in distance learning especially um so we are working on that um the disclaimer again is reminding our parents as part of the executive order is that if the students are not um making adequate progress that they will be asked to come back to to school but at the end of the day i will say this the parents will have the final say but it's going to be our job to try and talk them out of keeping them home and bring them into the building. One of the things that we have talked about too is even having virtual uh, tours of the building so that the parents can see that their students can absolutely be safe on our, in our school centers. So, um, you know, to, to really just build that trust that the students will be safe in school. I wanted to also mention for those of you that are parents of elementary school children, their first trimester report card was sent home this past Friday. So uh, in sent home, I mean an email was sent home um, with a digital version of it and how you can access. It was also part of a letter that we sent home on Friday with hot links on how to access the uh, elementary report card. But we can't forget about our secondary students, right? And so just a reminder that progress reports will be going out the 14th. Is that today or tomorrow? I, I lost the day, the track of the days. So the 14th. Uh, the secondary students, uh, middle and high school students will be bringing home or being, um, I say bringing home, it's all digital, their progress reports. It is a good time for them to keep um, 
keep track of where they are and also using this winter break to be able to catch up on some missing assignments, right? So this is a really good time for our students for two weeks to be able to catch up. We are working uh, continuously in regards to student engagement. One of the things that we're doing also is starting on January 4th, each region is receiving a, um, a, a an outreach, uh, a person who will be able to uh, help us to be able to reach out to our families of students that are not engaged or that are missing um, to, to try and get them back into our school and to really let our parents know that we have been trying to reach them and that their child's not doing well. So the schools were providing a list of those names to the, uh, this particular person in addition to the attendance liaison that we currently have uh, to assist us with that, to, to be able to help us engaging all of our students. As uh, Ms. Mikowski shared, the food distribution in our school sites uh, will uh, continue on in this Thursday uh, or uh, December, yeah, December 17th actually at selected schools and, and it's uh, H.L. Johnson, Royal Palm Beach High School, Royal Palm Beach Elementary, will be able to uh, distribute 16 days worth of food. Um, and it's gonna be kind of like pantry style boxes that the parents will be able to take home so that they have food over the two week holiday break. Um, Mrs. Wetzel is also with me here today. So I know you might not see her, but she is with us today and she is listening in. And uh, with that said, I will be able to answer any questions that you, you may have. Um, but before I say farewell, I just wanna wish all of you a happy and safe holiday season to all of you um, and maintaining that social distancing because our students need you back. And we don't need to be quarantining anybody. That's that's our that's our theme, right? It's like really, really be safe about how you celebrate and what you do so that our students can have our faculty, staff, teachers, and our students can come back and not having to quarantine when we're supposed to be back in school. So I'll be able to answer any questions that you may have at this time. Well, I must have covered it pretty good. I guess so. All right. <laughs> Thank Ms. you Andrew, very much. You you. Thank you. Thank you so much for all you do and, and support. Uh, you guys are really, you know, you're like one. And, and when you become one, you become a very strong uh, group. And, and I really appreciate all you do to support our, our schools in the village of Royal Palm. I think Ms. Andrews wanted to speak yeah. if I'm. Yes, thank you so much. And Mr. Thalma, can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Listen, uh, I, I paid close attention to your conversation with me tonight, and I do know that we're working uh, with our superintendent, but I heard you, and I'd like to uh, maybe put you into a conversation with uh, our chief of staff, our superintendent, that's at another level, to have that conversation, because I hear you talking about a dashboard. You know, we have our COVID dashboard, what we're doing every day, and uh, I would like to see us put something together where we can show just the kinds of things that we're talking about right now. We know that we have lost a lot of students that we're trying to bring back. Hillsborough County just did a special on 60 Minutes where they actually showed how many kids they found and got back to school. So that's something that could be on a dashboard. How many we started with that we lost back in March and how many we brought back, as well as the ones that are not making it. You know, kids that are having difficulty, the kind of services we're providing. So that's a wonderful conversation that's deeper than what we're talking about because we are doing the report to the state. That's a basic report that the governor asked every school district to do. And we're trying to put together the pieces of our puzzle right here to help these children. But we need to have voices such as yours tonight on how you see what a parent would need so that they would know that we're truly interested in what's happening to teachers. We can show on our dashboard if we're losing teachers based on this. There could be a whole uh, array of things that we can have out there that could be a fluid piece that parents could look at, community could look at, and also know where the expectations are. Because the things that you're talking about, we're experiencing all over the country. I sit on the Council of Great City Schools Executive Board, and we have these conferences uh, every week and these conversations. So I know what you're looking for, and I believe other people might be looking for that too. So I'm gonna set up a meeting for you to express that with the superintendent, his chief, and some of the other folks and see how, how we can do that. And I got some ideas too of what we're doing. Yes, this, the report is going to the governor tomorrow 
and that's just a written report. And you will be hearing about that very soon. It will probably be online as well as the board approval and everything else once the governor approves everything. But I see you digging a little bit more deeper and what we're doing in Palm Beach County as far as the vision and how we're going, where we've been, where we are now, and where we see ourselves to help the children as well as uh, the teachers, the parents, uh, and the school. So I really will work on that. That's a project uh, for us to work together with it, and I will call you and get that set up. But Thank I do you, want to, uh, to Western uh, Academy. You're awesome over there. We love what you do. I love to see the children today, and your presentation was so informative, and you can see all of the work. We're in a new normal now with the principals, the teachers, the parents, the bus drivers, the cafeteria workers, everybody's working hard in this new normal. You saw the same thing with H.L. Johnson. Uh, Mrs. Mikowski, I'm gonna miss you. You live right down the street from me. And I walk by your school every day and I see how hard you're working out there. And we've got to get a replacement that's gonna make it happen because you are just an awesome person. And I want you to come back to Palm Beach County whenever you want to come back, even though you're retired. You're never retired, uh, Ms. Mikowski. <laughs> so you can come. <laughs> You just call us and tell us when you want to come back. We got you, okay? You can stay home for a while, but we'd love to have you back. And thank you for all of your service. But I'm just telling everybody here, uh, you all have worked hard. This pandemic has been very, very dangerous. It's a, it's a worldwide problem. And Palm Beach County stepped up to the plate to make sure we had our teachers ready, to make sure we had our bus drivers, our principals. You've been in those buildings. I worry about you all every single day, all of you that are in the building. The children, their parents want them to come back and they're happy to be back because I do get a chance to visit schools. But I worry about the children that are home on the, on the, uh, on the computer. And they're so happy because they know that you love them. Uh, principals, teachers, all of you love them so much and you're trying to help everybody. We have to heal and get out of this pandemic. And it's so wonderful that the vaccines are out today and people are getting tested. And I just see us in the next few months getting back to normal, hopefully. But we still have to have our due diligence with our, <clears throat> our businesses and everything that we have to do and keeping our hands clean and six feet apart. All of that has to remain because we're not there yet. But I do believe that to keep talking to our community and our parents and our children to let them know that they've done a great job. They're working hard in the schools, even though many of them are having difficulty, they're trying, but they're trying under difficult circumstances. And some may say, oh my God, it's easy for me, but we got their number two, those that can do it, it might be kind of uh, lazying it off a little bit. We're gonna catch up with them and bring them back. We want all of our children to be successful. And I thank the Royal Palm Beach Education Advisory Committee. You, you gave the mask to the schools. You, you're doing all kinds of things. You're helping with scholarships. You've been there in good times, but we've been in tough times lately. And we all must continue to stick together, uh, work together and love one another and know that we're not gonna leave any student behind intentionally. And we're gonna work hard to catch them all up. And those that are at a level that's been kind of not getting to the top level, we're gonna bring them up. And those that's been below, we're gonna bring them up too. And we're working on a system to do that. And as you kind of take away uh, to go home for these holidays, I just want you to be safe and know that you've got to just continue to have your due diligence so that you can be healthy and the children can be healthy and safe. That's what it's all about so that we can get back to normal again. But it's been tough on everybody. And as your school board member, I want you to know, I just love you and I appreciate you so much. And I, I want you to stay safe and know that we're gonna get through this. We're gonna get through it and we're gonna work together on it together. And we want that input, uh, Mr. Talamar, because we know that you know what's going on. You've been in a whole lot of spots and other people too, and we hear you and we're gonna make sure that we make it transparent so that you'll know we're working very hard for all of the children. And thank you. Happy holidays, uh, Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, Kwanzaa is coming. Just enjoy and relax, please, and be safe. Thank you, you too, Ms. Andrews. Okay, anybody else have a report? Oh, I'm back on green again. Now I have access to it, be careful. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I just wanted to uh, 
I just wanted to make you aware as well that Ms. Vivia Green is with us here as well uh, tonight. I didn't see her on the screen, but um, she is with us tonight and listening on in case you have any questions uh, from Ms. Green as well. Thank you. May I, Ms. Ms. Highsmith? Yes, go right ahead. Ah, well, thank you. Hi, everybody. Uh, uh, Dr. Tolomer, we, uh, your, your frustrations, believe me, we all feel it. Uh, it's, um, you know, uh, engagement is one of our biggest concerns. Uh, you know, we meet with our uh, regional superintendents, uh, Ms. Haynes and our instructional superintendents, uh, Ms. Green and Ms. Wetzel. And of course, the engagement is, since day one has always been the, the, big, the big ticket item. One thing that we've been really concerned about there are a lot of strategies that we're all using. I mean, we're doing home visits like we've never done before, and those kind of things. And our our leadership knows that for us, it's a big deal. So, um, you know, so we are, you know, it is it is important to us, and we are uh, we are trying to ensure that we don't lose uh, kids here because we know that that's uh, obviously uh, we're in jeopardy of that. Uh, just a few things that we get have going on on campus this week. Normally, this week we're in exams. But because of the changing calendar, we don't have half days. So uh, we've got to try to get a lot of things in. We still want to make sure that we're having all of our festivities. So Mrs. Hauk, our AP for activities, has a whole bunch of stuff lined up for this month. Uh, hot chocolate in the morning. She's got a bunch of elves running around doing a bunch of stuff. Uh, uh, a snowman scavenger hunt. Um, uh, she, she's Holly. I'm Jolly. I think we're having a Holly Jolly uh, one of the few times that I ever get called jolly, and um, and so we're doing that, and then, but because normally we do all this during half days and exams, and there's no instruction, I'm particularly uh, concerned about ensuring that we have instruction, maintaining good bell-to-bell -bell instruction, and not letting people lose their focus. Miss Miss Jones, who's our AP for curriculum, is in, uh, you know, is particularly focused on that, making sure that all of our APs and uh, and of our, all of our leadership are, are uh, working with the teachers to support them more than ever this week to ensure that we don't lose that focus and the instructional time. And then, uh, then of course, we always have our safety and security, the COVID and all the other regular safety stuff that we have. And Ms. Amato, who is our, uh, is our principal's designee, has been my number two since then left. And, uh, and she, is, uh, she is working with all of the COVID stuff and everything else. She kind of runs the place as much as I do or more sometimes. Um, uh, if, if everything goes right, I think that we're going to get a chance to announce our graduation date this Thursday. We hope that, it, again, if everything works right uh, with the schedule and everything, we, we're hoping to be able 5.30 on Thursday, I'm hoping if everything works right, to be able to get out a little social media thing on Facebook and Instagram. We're gonna have a little mini celebration, letting everybody know and letting our seniors know when our graduation is. Um, and and then finally, uh, you know, I, I first met Jen back in in 2004 when we were both at uh, or 2005 when we were both at Seminole Ridge High School, and uh, and I saw her uh, just be a brilliant educator in every way. Uh, and when we had an opening for an assistant principalship, when I after. My first AP for curriculum was Pat, Mrs. Patterson, who's now the principal at John I. Leonard, um, was fabulous. And I knew that we needed somebody really, really good to replace her. And uh, we were fortunate enough that Jen came over and, and just is a great, great assistant principal for curriculum in every way. Uh, she was so responsible, uh, largely responsible for us getting that B and continuing the efforts that we did. At the time, she's a brilliant educator, a great person, and um, and of course, you've all seen that now at H.L. Johnson. Um, uh, somebody texted me when they heard that she was retiring and said, "You're so old that people in your tree are starting to retire," which <laughs> which is kind of true. Uh, but uh, but it's easy to mentor uh, superstars, right? And I figured out a long time ago, if you just surround yourself with superstars, uh, it's easy. Uh, she is great. We're going to miss her. But like I told her, look, an, an unforced early retirement, heck, you can't beat that, right? So uh, to Jennifer, uh, you know, I love you and you're great. Thank you for all that you did for Royal Palm Beach High School and for me. 
And uh, uh, thanks, everybody. Have a great holiday. Well done. Okay, student council report. Do you guys hear me? Yes. Good evening. First, I would like to say I missed you all. Um, even though I, we never met in person or had the privilege of shaking your hand, I still feel as if there is a connection that is plugged into an outlet that displays change and commitment from the village of Royal Palm Beach. So basically, we are all connected. Last time we met in October, I was informing you all about the Spirit Week Student Council was planning. And if no one told you, let me be the first to say that it was a blast. Not just because I attend RPBHS, but coming from the swarming text messages and Instagram posts from the student body that week, participation was sky high from both virtual and brick and mortar students. Entering into November, we're first welcoming our new council members. Student Council is, a, is an awesome organization because of the innovators, creators, and leaders that take the role to lead the student body into greatness. Our brick and mortar slash new and old members help serve the, the staff for our the staff for Dr. Armis's annual Thanksgiving luncheon that was held November 13th, 2020. And then after Thanksgiving break, student council and administration was not only energized, but well equipped and prepared for the month of December. This week, we have a lineup of scheduled events for the student body and staff. These events consist of a staff snowman scavenger hunt, a hot cocoa bar, ugly sweater selfies, sprinkled snowflakes of positivity, holiday treats, candy cane treats, and the list goes on. The excitement is already in the air. Lastly, this week, this week, Thursday, me and the student council advisor, Mrs. Riddle, will be dropping off about 30 to 40 shoe boxes that student council has helped prepare for HLJ Elementary School for the holidays. No, no, not just regular shoe boxes, but shoe boxes that contain toys, blankets, socks, books, and school supplies stashed inside. From the heart of Royal Palm Beach High School to the heart of HLJ Elementary, since I won't see you all again until 2021, have a happy holidays and a happy New Year's. And don't forget, as you enter into 2021, remember, it's always great to be a Wildcat from Royal Palm Beach High School. I yield the floor. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Johnson. I think we all always enjoy your report the most. <laughs> Anybody else have anything? Comments, questions? Yeah, Madam Chair, let, let me go ahead and just uh, extend the gratitude from the mayor and the council uh, to uh, Jennifer Mikowski. She's been just fantastic in our community. She's been the kind of uh, leader of our schools that sets a great example, not just for our, our schools, but also for the community. Can't uh, say how much we're gonna miss you uh, and uh, how much we appreciate you surviving uh, the uh, Dr. Armas mentoring uh, process, which is remarkable in itself. Uh, but seriously, we are going to miss you uh, and uh, we wish you well. Thank you, Councilman Hamara. Okay, anything else? Okay, we need to approve the minutes of our last meeting. I propose that we accept the minutes as is entered. I'll second. All yes, in favor. Organization. Sorry. Okay, I think that's it. Thank you, everyone, for being here. Sorry it, we ran long. <laughs> One second, Julie. Yes. The scholarship, please. Okay. Mm. The. 10 scholarships that we give out. Um, the press release will be put out when? Friday. Friday. And the application will be available on the Village website on Friday also. 10 scholarships will be available, $1,000 each. And that's it. Thank you. Merry Christmas, happy holidays, everybody. Merry Christmas, everybody. Bye. Happy Bye. holidays. Bye. <laughs>